beautiful lovelies. Hi, it's Emmy. Welcome back to another military ration tasting. Today, I'm going to have my very first Greek ration. And this cardboard box contains a ration that came all the way from Greece, thanks to Christos. Christos, thank you so much for sending this to me. And everything is written, thankfully, in three different languages, in Greek and English and French. If you enjoy these kinds of ration taste tests, be sure to check out the playlist where there are loads and loads of videos with more ration tasting. All right, let's see what's inside this box. Directions on how to use the heater and some tissue. Ooh, a can. A can of meat of some kind. Let's see if the Google Translate app will work on this. Looking for Greek text. Use your finger to highlight. Water meat with Rhine flesh meat Urbanson. So this is some sort of meat stew, which I think we could probably figure out just from the picture. Oh, another tin. So it takes a picture and then you can highlight it. Mediterranean de Ethan Grud. So it makes it sound like German. So this is some sort of Mediterranean tomato stew. <laughs> oh, another large tin. This looks like another kind of meat. This one looks like it might have some beans in it. Several packets of what looks like to be crackers. Heater, sugar and salt, and tea. Sugar. Two candies, it's six packets of fuel, and some coffee. And these look like water purification tablets, I think. Let's see if it'll translate that. Alizone. I don't think these are water purification tablets because they're so large. And it also says four milligrams. They don't really look like vitamins either. All right, so I'm not quite sure what that is. <laughs> The black headed matches. All right, so there's that. It's a pretty basic ration. Kind of reminds me of some of the Russian rations in terms of being very hefty and meaty and in tins and lots of crackers, kind of similar to my Kazakhstan ration. I'm actually gonna use the heater for one of these and the other two I'm gonna boil in some water so they're nice and hot. So, so these were manufactured in 2017 and they're good to 2019. So ZSF1 is the meat and ZS04 is the vegetable. So I'm gonna take these paper labels off so we'll have something to compare with after we heated them up. The halazone or the alazone as it's translated on the app. So these are indeed water purifying tablets. Alrighty, so I have my canteen here. Put two tab tablets into a bottle full of water. Oh yeah, they smell like chlorine. Oh. All right, two, and swirl. It says don't tighten it, so we'll let that sit for how long? It says after two minutes, stir it. All right, to demonstrate the stove, I'm gonna take a cookie sheet. So these are the legs that go downwards. And this goes upwards. Place all fuel tablets in the pocket stove and then light them using closed matches. Place kitchen utensil with content to be heated or boiled on the pocket stove. Use two solid tablets when boiling water, more for beverage. Use one and one and a half when heating canned meals. I'm gonna light this here and then I'm gonna take it outside because this off gas is terrible fumes. But for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna start it here. I mean, I know it's fuel, but I'm just curious to see what it says. Solid fuel. <laughs> Okay, yes, it is going now. Now I'll just place this right on top. It is absolutely lit. I'm gonna take this outside and let this cook. <laughs> so this does feel hot, it's more on the side of warm. I added an additional solid fuel block on the instructions it said one to one and a half, so I did a total of two. Ooh, immediately I smell like beef stew. Look at that, ooh, it's hot. Ooh, that looks good, actually. Ooh, hot, 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 hot. Wow, that is a lot of food. That actually looks delicious. Great big white beans and some kind of meat. It looks like beef and an orangey oily sauce. All right, it smells great. It smells like dinty more. It smells like canned beef stew. Itadakimasu. 
Mm -hmm. And that's pretty good. The meat is a little bit stringy and firm, but it's nice to be able to chew something substantive. The beans are really, really tender and soft. And the whole flavor of it is just like a beef stew. Tiny bit of tomato in there, nice and salty beans, and you've got the shredded beef in here. And definitely stick to your ribs hearty. Let's have it with a biscuit. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I actually much prefer it on a cracker. That big crunch goes really well with the texture of the meat. And because it's a little bit salty with the cracker, it's perfect. All right, let's have a sip of our tea. And that's just straight up black tea. Tastes like a bag of Lipton's or Red Rose. Delicious, black tea, simple, unadulterated. Doesn't really need anything, but of course you could add sugar if you like. Let's grab these out. Now these are screaming hot. So it looks to be like a green bean vegetable of some kind. Here we go. Ooh, a lot of oil in these as well. I'm going to take them all out so you can see how big the portion is. This is a lot of food. Hmm. Those are pretty sad. Green beans are very, very soft. Just mushy soft. And they don't taste all that much like green beans. They taste kind of tinny and just slightly vegetal or plant-like, but not like green beans. But I am grateful that they include this in a ration. I think it's great that vegetables are served. They're just not very well cooked. And I think that's part of the canning process. You have to bring the food up to such a high temperature and for a certain amount of time, it's gonna overcook things like vegetables, but. For what it's worth, it's not too bad. It's slightly acidic. I think there's a little bit of tomato in here. And they're well seasoned, they're salty enough. And there's a little bit of onion in here. Maybe it's a matter of putting it on a cracker again. Let's do that. It always seems to be better on a cracker, right? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Just slightly better on a cracker. And I think that has to do mostly with texture. You get a little bit more textural variety because you've got that big hard crunch of the cracker. So this is another meat stew dish. And I think this time it's gonna be packed with peas. Hefty, hefty portions again. Wow, look at that. This must be a 24 hour ration because there's just so much food here. This one, like the green beans, I also appreciate. There's a lot of vegetables in here. Really great source of fiber. Mm. <laughs> I can imagine if you grew up eating canned peas, this would probably be pretty delicious. So this entree is nice because it's not too salty. The meat is very similar in terms of texture and flavor as the first one. Mm -hmm. I think it's beef as well. A little on the dry side and fully imparted <laughs> with pea flavor. Everything tastes like canned mushy peas. All right, let's try it on a cracker. I think that will definitely improve things. And it does. Again, it's that texture, that big crunch that kind of enlivens things. It gives a little bit more stimulation to I think your mouth, your taste buds and your brain. Of course, the flavors are pretty similar. The crackers only add a little bit of salt and a good amount of sugar. It's not really about the flavor. I think it's more about just the texture. Of these two entrees, I definitely prefer the beans and meat to the peas and meat. And that I think has to do with my preference of canned beans rather than canned peas. The canned peas to me just taste too much of like cannedness rather than the canned beans, which taste more like beans to me. Yeah, but they both have that similar soft texture, which is nice. It's like a little dip kind of like you're having hummus or something. Mm -hmm. Here are the napkins they included. And that way you can reseal them. And while they look like tissues, they're actually napkins. They're a little bit larger than just blowing your nose tissues. A little bit thicker material too. So it said after two minutes, you can twist the cap on tightly and give it a swirl. All right, let's pour some in the cup. Give our treated water a taste. 
Cheers. Ooh, it smells like a swimming pool. Hmm, <laughs> and actually doesn't taste as chlorine as I thought. Yeah, actually it is slightly salty. Some of the water purifying tablets I've had in the past were just terribly chlorine but this isn't. Hmm, I'm surprised, especially since I put two in there. Hmm, although you can definitely smell it. And then lastly, I'm gonna have one of these. And these are one of two bonbons that were included. So I think these are actually the same. Mmm, smells like strawberry. Here we go. Mmm. Yeah, that's great. I like that candy a lot. It has a great bit of tanginess to it. It's nice and sour, full of strawberry flavor. And of course it's a hard candy, so it's sweet and delicious, but it's nice and tangy. I like it. Not like a sour candy where your like mouth is bleeding, but oh. <laughs> It's actually filled when you bite it. It's got like a fruit filling in the middle. And then it gets kind of chewy, kind of like a mento. So my final thoughts on this ration, it is a very generous ration. The portions were huge. Definitely stick to your ribs types of meals with lots of protein with the beans and the peas and the meat, but all around very simple. Just have your hardtack accompaniments to go with your entrees, a couple drinks, very, very simple ration, which I appreciate. <laughs> Greetings my lovelies, hi it's Emmy, welcome back to another military ration. Today I'll be tasting my first Danish ration. This ration comes from Denmark and it was sent to me by my lovely viewer Rob. Rob, thank you so much for sending this to me. I'm super excited to taste this, this box is huge. I'm assuming this is a 24 hour ration pack because it is so large, but we will find out. If you enjoy these ration tastings, be sure to check out the playlist down below, which includes lots of US MREs and international tastings as well. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So this is menu NR04, chili con carne. I was surprised by this flavor, chili con carne. It's something I associate more with the state of Texas rather than Denmark. So it definitely has my curiosity peaked. So let's see what's inside. Here's the package. Oh, it has a Y on it. Danes, do tell me what this is for. What does that mean? It must have some sort of purpose. What? I don't know. Here's the main entree, chili con carne. This is tuna and lime and pepper and tuna in water. And here's chocolate muesli, squeezable fruit packet, a little energy bar, dried cranberries, cashew nuts, two packets of jam, some farmhouse pate, a chocolate bar. Looks like it might have gotten melted. Ooh, spicy sauce. <laughs> Another pate, this time it's Brussels pate, a sundries pack, raisin, peach flavored drink, cocoa flavored drink, lemon flavored drink, peanut butter, whole grain biscuits, whole wheat bread, whole wheat bread, and a toffee protein bar. My gosh, that is huge. And in the bottom of the box, another Y. Hmm. So the first thing I'm gonna do is heat this up. I'm gonna put the chili con carne into a pot of boiling water and boil it for about five to 10 minutes. Be right back. Just by its gestalt, it reminds me a bit of the UK ration because there are several different kinds of brands and tons of different items. This particular kind of packaging reminds me a lot of the Swedish ration that I had. Lots of kind of flat envelopes that I can eat directly out of the package. I think first I'm gonna open the whole wheat bread. This is made by the Bridgeford company and there are two packages of this. If I'm not mistaken, Bridgeford is the same company that makes the bread and some of the kind of instant sandwiches in the US MREs as well. It smells like wheat bread. There's the bread. I find if I cut it in half, that helps make it less dense and more palatable. So there's the bread. Looks pretty similar to sandwich bread, but just feels a lot denser. I'm gonna try a little bit of this tuna and it comes in this packet, nice and flat. And this is tuna in water. I'm gonna grab the spoon out of the sundry pack. I've never had a ration pack with two spoons before. Ah, <gasps> a toothbrush, this is great. I love the idea of encouraging good dental hygiene. <laughs> Looks like a mint, several wet naps, three packs of coffee, another mint, two packets of black tea, a few packets of salt, three packets of pepper, three toothpicks, excellent, and two packs of sugar. Looks like three mints. Great sundries pack, very, very thorough. I am surprised that this not includes matches. Most of them do. Interesting. Now I'm gonna use my spoon <laughs> and take out some of this tuna fish onto my bread. 
plain tuna fish in water. And let's grab the other one, which is the tuna lime and pepper. I've never heard of lime and pepper. Here in the US, we have a lot of lemon pepper, but not lime. So I'm curious to see how that tastes. So this one's packed in oil, while the first one was packed in water. So let's try the plain one first. Mm. And that's not surprising. It tastes just like regular old tuna fish, nice and salty. And I like the fact that it's drained of the water so you don't have to deal with all that tuna water and draining it and stuff. And it doesn't have that metallic taste as well because it's packed in those nice little plastic envelopes. Great. And the bread actually tastes pretty good. It's a little dry and of course denser than regular sandwich bread, but still pretty close. And let's try the lemon pepper one. What a great snack. Great injection of a little protein. So I'm back with my <laughs> entree. Take this out. I'll pour it into this bowl so you can see the contents. So it looks like to be rice, some kind of grain in there, some ground meat, some chili beans, some red pepper, and some onion. Let's give it a taste by itself. Here we go. Itadakimasu. Mmm. That's pretty good. It tastes a lot like a can of chili, but I like the fact that it's not overly salty and that it has some additional grain in there. I think chili purists would be horrified by this because <laughs> there are those additions to it, but I like it. I find that it makes it more hearty and probably keeps you full. Now let's try it on a piece of bread. Mm-hmm. Mm a little touch of cumin in there, some tomato, and it's good. I like it. Like always, hot sauce will make it better. Mm-hmm. The little addition of vinegar and chili heat in there really make it better. Yeah, that's pretty good. Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you. And welcome back to another ration taste test. I have not tasted a military ration in a very long time, and this one has been sitting in my closet, and I thought, why not finally taste it? Because it's actually a ration I've wanted to taste for a long time. It is a French ration that was very kindly sent to me by Alex. Alex, thank you so much for sending this to me and for being so patient to finally <laughs> watch the actual taste test. So as you probably noticed, I did not take any French in school and I did Google translate this to try to get an approximation of how I'm supposed to say this, but this is a ration du combat en du vidéo rouge <laughs> right there. And this translates to a French individual reheatable combat ration. This is a 24 hour ration pack, meaning this should have enough food for a soldier for 24 hours. So this is going to be a large ration. If you've not seen my other MRE ration taste test, you should definitely check out the playlist. There are many that I've tried and this one I've been wanting to try for so very long. So can't wait to see what's in this. This is menu 13 and according to mreinfo.com, menus eight through 14 contain pork while menus one through seven do not contain any pork. Now that I've said that, Translated here, it says beef with carrots. So maybe rather than pork, it means vegetarian? I don't know, we'll have to get clarification on that. So this ration comes packaged very compactly in a cardboard box, as opposed to retort packages or plastic bags that often many of these rations come in. And look at that. Beautifully packaged, very efficiently. We have some muesli. Saint Jean's biscuits. And what's interesting about this ration is it looks like these are actual brand name products as opposed to a lot of kind of generic packaging. Instant soup, a cereal bar, and a nougat bar, a large energy drink, strawberry jam, tea and coffee. This is the actual heating kit. So it comes with a little stove along with instructions on how to fold it up and use it. Oh, cool. So it looks like there's a little handle that we use to heat up our tins. Like that. 70% chocolate bar. Nice package of tissue. Ooh, rillet de thon. And fromage. So this is cheese. Candy. And this is some other kind of bar. Wow, two very 
hefty tins. This is a beef carrot stew. This is a huge tin. Look, it's the size of my hand. And this one is the, looks like the tuna fish, I think. Let me grab my handy dandy Google Translate app. Torsades de carbonara means twists of carbonara. I've got a half a liter of water and I'm going to mix the drink mix into that. I would imagine you would do this in your canteen. No color to that, which I appreciate. Here's my electrolyte drink. And this is champignon. This is mushroom soup. Look how that thickened up. That's like glue. <laughs> Cream of mushroom soup. Carbonara twists. The pasta dish. This one I'm not going to heat up. I want to have it cold because in the field, this is often what happens. Pull this up. Whoa, look at that. I have to say that does not look very appetizing. And we've got pasta in here, but lots of protein. Rigatoni kind of pasta. Here we go. I'm surprised that the pasta actually has some bite to it. Most of the time when you have pastas in these kind of pre-cooked retort packages, the pasta tends to be very, very mushy, but this actually has some bite. It's not al dente, but it's not entirely mushy either. Mmm, that's good as well. Big, big chunk, tender. The sauce is creamy but not cheesy or overly rich. And I'm having this at room temperature. This is cold. Mm -hmm. I'm sure this would be a lot better warmed up, but yeah, that's actually pretty good. I'm really impressed with the portion of meat in here. Look at that, huge. Mm. I think this is actually pork. It's got a little bit of smokiness to it. This is delicious. Wash that down with some of our electrolyte drink. Here we go. Mm. Definitely electrolyte drink. It has a little bit of that kind of Gatorade viscosity to it in terms of mouthfeel. It's slightly sweet, tastes a bit artificial. Maybe there's some artificial sweetener in there. And it's got a light lemon lime flavor to it. Mm -hmm. And with that, we're gonna try our mushroom soup. It is very gluey in consistency and doesn't look all that appetizing, but the taste is pretty good. It's actually better than canned cream of mushroom soup that we have here stateside. It has a really great mushroom flavor. Very intense. Delicious. <laughs> Let's make the stove. Here's our little handle for our tin. Here's the stove itself. A plastic bag for trash or whatever you need it for. So we just open it up. And there is our utensil. Lots of matches in a plastic bag. Toothpicks. To keep your teeth clean. Water purification tablets. And we have our fuel. Bring these edges up like this. And it just stands up. Very, very simple. It has little tiny legs to elevate it. Off the ground, there's some vents. Pop one of the tablets on here. These are very touristy box of matches, which I quite like. And get this going. It has a very pungent smell to it, the fuel tablets. <laughs> okay, I think it's going. Yes, I've got a blue flame going. Wow, this is a pretty hefty portion, I have to say. Let's hook it on like this. And now we've got a little serving tray. Oh, genius! So smart. Now we're going to place that right on top. And now we can cook our meal. I'm gonna use the provided spork and give this a stir. Looks like there's some carrots, as they said, and looks like the beef is on the bottom. I'm gonna give this a bit of a stir. It's like we're cooking, this is great. Love it. And already I can hear some bubbling. Very cool. That's impressive. Flameless ration heaters do not create a flame, but I have found in my experience they don't heat up your meal all that well. This, on the other hand, wicked hot right away. 
and I'm going to extinguish this real quick. Okay, so now here is our dinner, our beef stew. It looks very substantial. We've got carrots, we've got potatoes, and big hunks of beef. And it looks actually very appetizing. The beef is well cooked. It's not entirely mushy. I appreciate that. I feel like there's a nice chew to it still. It's not just goop. It's not overly salty, which I really, really appreciate. A lot of canned beef stews are too salty for me, and this is not. Let's try a potato. Mm -hmm. The potatoes are tender, a little bit mealy, but that's what happens to potatoes when you have them cooked for a while. And let's try the carrots. Mm, mm -hmm. They've soaked up all the flavor of the gravy. They taste very beefy, yet they are slightly sweet and very, very tender. This is great. A very hearty, hearty meal. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, my lovelies, there you have it. There is the RCIR, the French ration, and it totally stood up to all the hype. I think what separates this ration from other rations that I've tasted is the sheer amount of variety included in one box. There was not just two drinks, there were several drinks, several hot drinks at that. Not just tea, not just coffee, but two types of tea, coffee and hot chocolate, and an electric light drink as well. Biscuits, there's not just one type of biscuits, but three different kinds of biscuits. One that is sweet, one that is salty, and one that could go kind of either direction. A couple different entrees, a pasta dish, a stew dish, so there's a little bit of variety in there as well. Big thanks to Alex for sending me this ration and for making it possible. Greetings lovelies, hi, it's Emily, welcome back. Today I'll be eating another military ration, and it is this. So this is a Japanese Self-Defense Forces ration pack. So this ration pack was graciously sent to me by the kings of military ration pack reviews here on YouTube, Gundog, G. Schultz, and Kiwi Dude. If you guys don't know them already, I'll put the links down in the description box, but they do all these different kinds of reviews of international military ration packs here on YouTube. So be sure to check them out, show them some love, and thank you guys so much for sending this to me. I'm super excited to taste the Japanese military ration packs. If you've missed my other videos, I've done a couple other ration packs. I've done two MREs, which are an American version of these ration packs, as well as a UK version. So be sure to check the links below if you missed those videos. So yeah, so this is super exciting. So these are called midi meshi, which is a combination of military and meshi. Meshi means food. So this is a type two midi meshi, and type two is called paku meshi. Paku meaning packs. So these come in different packs and it includes this awesome thing. I'm so excited to check this out. It comes with this bag, this very long bag, and it has instructions on how to heat the packs up. It also comes with this as well. So this is the chemical pack that you put in here along with the food and you add some water. And then that will cause a chemical reaction which will heat up the packs, which is similar to the American MREs that have a self-heating unit as well. So let's see what's inside this thing. On the back, it says in English, it says Japanese type 2, and it says pork with amakara sauce. So amakara is a combination of amai and karai. So amai is sweet, and karai can mean salty or spicy. So it's like a sweet and salty sauce. So, yeah. And the contents feel kind of squishy. The plastic is kind of thin, and almost translucent and almost the light kind of passes through it so yeah let's see what's inside it has a little notch so we can open it this way you don't need a knife and let's see what is inside oh okay here we go this is the pork and the sauce and it feels squishy and i can feel some chunks inside there and then we have two packets of cooked rice so this is just gohan, which is just rice, and it looks to be already cooked. I think potentially you could just eat this cold if you didn't want to heat it up. I think it would be fine just like this. And then it comes with a spork, quite a bit shorter than both the UK and the American version in terms of length. Uh, but again, very sturdy plastic. Doesn't look like it will break on you. Oh, I almost forgot. So Gundam Jishult's 9 and Kiwi Dude also included three of these packets which are furekake, and furekake are seaweed-based 
seasonings that you add to rice. Super lightweight and adds a ton of flavor to your rice. It's very common in bentos, so you could liberally just sprinkle this onto your rice to give it some flavor and taste. I'm gonna keep these up outside because by the looks of the size of that vent hole, it looks like it's gonna gas, off gas a lot. So yeah, I think it's better to be doing that outside <laughs> rather than inside. All right, so let's go do that. And I'll let it sit for the requisite 20 minutes and then we'll come back and taste. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, so we're gonna open the Morian heat pack, and inside is the heat pack. Next, we're gonna take the heat pack and place it at the bottom of the bag. Then place the two rice trays and the entree into the bag, forming a triangle. Now using the bag that the heat pack came into, we're gonna fill up the water up to the line, which very cleverly is printed inside and says, do not overfill. Pour the measured water into the bag and fold over the flap and then make sure you have something to prop up the bag and then allow it to sit for 20 minutes. That's awesome. Okay, so we're back and it's been 20 minutes since I've put these ration packs into their heater and it was amazing, super great thermodynamic reaction. So I was a little bit concerned that the steam and the gases wouldn't be trapped in because of the way the bag was structured, but it worked perfectly, beautifully. The entire bag and the heating unit stayed inflated for the entire 20 minutes pretty much. And uh, yeah, it was super great. A lot more reactive, I feel, than the US MRE kits where it's just much more self-contained um, in terms of the reaction. So let's open one of these rice packs first. Urgh. Rice is ubiquitous in Japan. It's like bread, like here in the States. So it's served with everything. So great to have some rice. And here is the sauce pack. Let's give that a open. Oh, it smells great. And it's steaming hot here. It looks like a stew. It's bright orange in color. And it smells awesome. I'm just gonna pour it over my rice. Oh, it looks great. Yum. I'm gonna get a piece of meat along with some rice. Itadakimasu. Mmm. It's quite good. It is a little bit spicy. It's delicious. The pork pieces are actually very, very tender. The pork belly pieces, so they're nice and fatty and super tender. And it doesn't taste like cafeteria food. It's great. And it doesn't have a tin flavor either because it's in this pack. It's really great and a little bit spicy, which I find kind of surprising for Japanese food. The rice is delicious as well, tender, slightly sticky, very much the style of Japanese rice. It's really great. The sauce is a little bit oily, a little fatty, but it's delicious. Nice and oniony, again, with a little bit of soy and a little bit of spice, which I'm actually quite surprised by. And in my opinion, much better than any other ration packs that I've had, both the UK and the US version. I feel like the food doesn't taste like cafeteria-like because it's slightly spicy and so flavorful. I think if you couldn't heat this up in the ration heater, that it would still taste delicious. Fantastic. I love it. All right, so let's try just the regular rice with a couple of these beikake seasonings as well. Okay, so there's the other rice pack. And let's put the wasabi beikake. And we'll put some of that on there. That's pretty generous. And we'll put on the al shizo as well. Put that in the middle. That looks very similar to the wasabi. And then we'll put the salmon one as well. So let's taste the salmon one first. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. Super savory and umami, slightly sweet, and fishy and briny, but delicious. The next one is the ao jizo, which is the green shiso leaf. Here we go. Mmm. Mm-hmm full of shiso flavor. Shiso has a very unique flavor. It tastes a little bit anisey, a little bit like basil, and slightly floral. That one also had some sesame seeds in it, so it's a little bit toasty, but nice and salty, great. And the last one is the wasabi, which is translated in English as a Japanese horseradish. Mmm, mmm. That has some fish flakes in it as well, and salty and wasabi, so it has a little bit of that nose flaring action, great. I think I actually like the salmon one the best in terms of just having an all around really delicious seafoody yummy flavor. This rice, I have to say, is wonderful. 
for those people out there that eat rice, you guys know that nothing is worse than cold rice. It has this really hard, terrible, stale texture. But because this has been heated so thoroughly, it's nothing like that. It tastes like fresh steamed rice. I am super impressed with that. So good and sticky and delicious. Love it. So that was my Japanese Self-Defense Forces ration pack tasting, and it was marvelous. Thank you guys so much for sending me this packet. I really loved it, not only for its wonderful flavor, but I really love the simplicity of it. All it had was the heater and the dishes. It was really simple and easy to put together. Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. Hi, it's Emmy. Welcome back to another military ration taste test. Today, I'm gonna to be tasting this. And this is a Polish 24 hour ration sent to be by Matt. Matt, thank you so much for sending this to me. This is going to be my first Polish ration taste test ever. And look at the size of this thing. It is huge. So along with the ration pack, Matt also included this and this and this. How great is that? Velcro this onto the back of my hat. And I've got my Polish flag which I can include right in front there. Awesome. Alrighty, so now that I'm officially outfitted, let's go ahead and open this. Look at the size of this thing. It is huge, it is very heavy. And Matt also included four pages of notes, so I can go ahead and tell you in detail what is inside this ration pack. So it contains enough food to feed someone for 24 hours. This plastic feels very similar to the plastic found on a US MRE, very thick mill. The color, of course, is different and the package is quite larger. This is a dark forest green and it does not have a peelable seal. Look at this! Paper cups, awesome, I've never, had a ration that actually includes paper cups. What else? Oh my gosh, here's the official list of items. Two packets of utensils and napkins. Looks like there is a regular plastic spoon, a fork, and a small spoon in there as well, and a knife. This is very light. I think these are the rye crackers that Matt wrote about in his notes. This is a fruit bar, chocolate bar, dried fruit. These are some concentrated instant drink pouches, a tin of potted meat, some jam, honey, and this is a little hexamine heater. Ooh, another kind of potted meat. Oh, I like that lid. can save that for later. Very smart. Oh, another package of crackers. Wow, this has a lot of stuff in it. Three more beverage pouches. Oh, another set of plastic utensils. Ooh, this looks like the main right here. Look at that, nice tin, another main. And lastly, two packages of crackers or kind of like hard tack. Let's go ahead and see what's inside this bag of paper cups. It's kind of similar to an accessories pack. I have to say, I love the addition of paper cups. It really kind of frees up some space. If you're using your canteen or using your canteen cup to heat up your food, then you have paper cups to have your beverages in. Brilliant, and it's not plastic. Two resealable plastic bags. Matt actually says these plastic bags are for customizing your own ration. And one plastic bag. So this bag is a trash bag. It's kind of flimsy, so Matt says he likes to use this bag instead. So far, I'm really impressed with the quality of everything so far. And we have a roll of toilet tissue, three wet wipes, two packages of salt, two packages of pepper, three vitamin C candies, three coffee candies, three xylitol gums, which is used in lieu of toothbrushing. It contains xylitol, which doesn't allow bacteria to stick to your teeth, therefore keeping things fresh and clean. Package of sugar, instant coffee as opposed to freeze-dried coffee. It's a powder, but it does come together instantly. There's also supposed to be a gusseted bag with water disinfectant but I don't see that in here. Maybe it'll appear later in the ration. First thing I'm gonna do is clean up my hands with a Be Fresh wet nap. I hope these are lemon scented and with a little lemon in the corner, I think it's gonna be. Those are my favorite. All right, I can smell the lemon already. It smells great. It smells just like the ones I remember. It's the same kind of material. Nice and lemon fresh. It smells like 
Lemon Fresh Joy soap. Next, let's open up our little heater here. This is similar to a hexamine stove. I'm not gonna be doing this inside because that would be quite toxic, but let's open it and see what it looks like inside. Here's the instructions on how to assemble it. And look how much fuel it includes. That's impressive. I've never had a ration that includes this many fuel tablets. So it looks like there's two six packs of fuels. Great big matches. Those are impressive. Looks like they're dipped in wax. And here is a bag. Ooh, another box of matches. Oh, it actually comes in a box. I love that. How charming is that? And here is the heater itself. So what they have illustrated here is a can. So I thought there was some sort of piece that makes a little can, but this is actually illustrating the ration itself. So you take this entree and you bend this around it to create a handle. <gasps> okay, let's do this. We're gonna fold the sides of this up. Nothing new here. Okay, so those become the legs of the stove. And then we're gonna open up one of the fuel tablets place that right there. Because I'm inside, I'm not gonna actually light this, but imagine me lighting that. Next, we use this little piece of metal here and bend it into a handle. So this demonstrates a couple different ways that you can make the handle. One being like this. So you can bend it at a 90 degree angle and another 90 degree angle. And you can use it to pick up. Oh my gosh, look at that. Brilliant! When it's hot, you just lift it off like that. So stinking smart. So you can fashion it like this, kind of like a letter C, or you can do a triangular version, more kind of like that. Brilliant. So stinking clever. I love that. No need for pots and pans, you just use the tin provided. So smart. Let's go ahead and test these out. Ooh, that lit beautifully and just went out beautifully as well. Let's try one of these. Ooh, look at that. That's a much bigger burn and longer burn. Much more appropriate for the hexamine stove. Look, you can barely put it out. All right, I'm gonna go stick this in my sink. <laughs> So those both work beautifully. Since I won't be using the provided stove to heat up my food, I'm gonna just use some boiling water. So Matt just explained to me something new that I never knew about, but traditionally in Poland, people have two meals a day. One big meal in the day, what we would call breakfast, but in Polish they call it something more like dinner, a kind of lunch brunch dinner, big meal, usually has some kind of savory item. And then they would have their supper, or what we might call in the US dinner, later in the day, so two big meals. So that's why there are two main meals in this ration, based on that tradition. Okay, so this one is pork neck and gravy with vegetables. And I'm gonna heat this up in some boiling water, but he told me it's important to give this a crack and open it up a little bit for venting. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Ooh, that looks great already. I've got a pot of hot water, I'm gonna place that inside and then I'm gonna heat that up on the stove. And these are similar to baked beans. I have to say, I love these lids. You can save your food that you don't finish if you're interrupted for whatever reason. You can just pop these back on, place them in a bag, and then just be on your way. Here are the beans. Wow, look at the size of those beans. That looks like a bean stew. I'm gonna place that in the hot water of this pot and heat that one up as well. So while the main entrees are heating, let's go ahead and try these. And these are two types of potted meat. Let's go ahead and open this one first. This one I think is gonna be the more spreadable one. Yes, indeed. And with that, we're gonna try this. This is a very lightweight package, feels like air. And these are little rye crisps. And here they are, look at that. So lightweight, almost weighs nothing and cracks almost like styrofoam with our spread. Get the lucky mouth. Mmm. Delicious, really smooth, smooth, smooth consistency. Great crunch of the cracker. The cracker does have a styrofoamy texture, but it's fresh and has a nice crisp texture, which is a great contrast to the smooth and creamy pate. 
The pate tastes pretty livery. If you don't like liver, if you don't like pate, you might find this a bit difficult to ingest. And when I say livery, I mean kind of irony, a little bit metallic tasting. To me, it's scrumptious. Mm. And these crisps are delightful as well. Really great, light, crunchy texture. They actually remind me a lot of Japanese senbei, although it doesn't have that kind of MSG laden, sweet and salty coating on the outside. The texture is quite similar. All right, let's open our other can of meat. Ooh, yes. This has a much coarser texture to it. You can actually see the kind of chunks of meat in there. There's a little bit of meat jelly. And this looks a little bit more like luncheon meat. It smells a little bit like Vienna sausages. Here we go. Mmm, and that's absolutely delicious. It tastes a little bit chickeny to me, but it's not overly salty. It has a really soft texture, actually. I was expecting it to be a little bit more resilient, but it's not. It's soft, and it's not like earth-shatteringly salty like Spam is. It's great. I love that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely delicious. I would make a sandwich out of that any day. Mmm. Here are my main entrees. So this one is the pork neck stew. And with these, I'm gonna have these. And these are like hardtack biscuits. And Matt told me to be very careful because it's been known that people have chipped teeth on them. Rather than being square, these are rectangles. And it looks like there's little bits of fennel seed in there. Oh my gosh, look how hard this is. Oh, super hard. This looks hearty. Lots of vegetables, might be cabbage. I see carrots, I see some beans. And a nice big hunk of pork right here. What I'm gonna do is soak my cracker right in there. Let it absorb some of that broth. All right, here we go. Mmm, that's really good. A nice hearty porky stew, great pork flavor, very tender meat, good and strong flavor of celery actually. Lots of celery, a little bit of onion, and the sauce is pretty brothy. It's almost like a soup. It tastes a little tinny, but this is in a can after all, so we shouldn't be surprised. And the carrots are nice as well. All right, let's see if we can bite into the hardtack. Here we go. <laughs> I can. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's a little bit sweet. It's kind of like a biscuit. It's a little bit sweet. It goes well with the broth in here. Very dense, and it has a little bit of kind of an anise flavor from the, what I think are fennel seeds. Mm-hmm. I bet this actually would go really well with coffee. So even with a good soaking, these remain very, very hard. Ah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But pretty tasty. These are actually tastier than the hardtack that I've had in the past. These have a little bit of that kind of anise fennel flavor as opposed to the regular hardtack, which tastes more like saltines, but very, 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 very hard. And this is the bean stew. Look at that, look at the size of those beans. Those are lovely. This also contains some meat, it looks almost like bacon. Ooh, look, nice big piece of sausage right there. Oh yes. Mmm. That's really good. It's got a little bit of kind of a oil slick on top so your lips get all kind of shiny and slick but has a really great smoky flavor probably from the additions of this meat in here and the sausage but it's not salty beans are really really tender and plump and soft without being mushy delicious try the sausage next i'm gonna try that on a cracker wow that looks like kielbasa Mm-hmm. This is definitely one of the better entrees I've had in these international rations. Absolutely delicious. So while I have my crisp out, let's go ahead and try some of this jam and honey as well. And honey. <laughs> Look at Honey that looks like this just means it's crystallized. It's not bad. Honey doesn't ever go bad. And put that on my crisp. Mm hmm I love honey. Sweet, delicious, wonderful. Let's try some of this jam. Mmm. 
That jam is delicious. Has a nice tang to it. Tastes a little bit like blackberry. Scrumptious, nice little snack with tea. <laughs> Big thanks to Matt for sending this to me and for sending me my great gear. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Be sure to check out the military playlist if you want to see more of these ration taste tests. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy that one. I hope you guys learned something. Share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Subscribe, like, and I shall see you in the next one. Toulou, take care. Bye! <laughs>